Okay, this is a video about how to solve equations with fractions such as these. Uh, more complicated equations than you would find at lower grades. These ones would be around about A or B grade, depending upon the difficulty. Um, as usual, when you've got an equation with fractions, um, there are a couple of ways that you could solve them. Uh, I'm going to show you two ways you can solve this type of equation. Um, the first method is going to be simply just by multiplying. So method number one is going to be multiplying. And method number two is going to be by making a common denominator. Okay, that's similar to when you add or subtract fractions um, with just numbers rather than algebra as well. So if we start with the multiplying method, um, the trouble with this equation, the thing that is causing us difficulty, are these three and this four, these fractions, these denominators of the fractions um, are giving us a bit of uh, trouble. So what we're going to try and do is get rid of both of them. Now I'm going to try and get rid of the four simply by timesing both sides of my equation by four. Now when we say times by four for an equation, um, we normally say times both sides of the equation by four, but in fact we mean times every term in the equation by four. So if you look at this fir first term here, okay, this is x plus three divided by four and then multiplied by four. Um, and that is going to give us just x plus three because the divide by four here, divide by four, and the times by four are going to cancel each other out. Okay. The second fraction, we've no such luck. The divide by 3 and the times by 4 don't cancel out. So I'm going to write 4 times the numerator and then keep the same denominator, the divide by 3. And then on the right hand side of my equation, yeah, I've got to times this term here, 3 times by 4 is going to make 12. So that's my first step there. I've got rid of the denominator here by doing the opposite. Um, and now I'm going to have a go at getting rid of this denominator here. So I'm going to times by 3. The reason we're times in by 3 is because it's the inverse of divide by 3. So let's have a look at what we're going to get now. So this term here, which I can put brackets around, needs to be multiplied by 3. This term here, which is a fraction, also needs to be multiplied by 3. But as before, that effect is going to be just to get rid of the divide by 3. So the divide by 3 and the times by 3 cancel out. We're just left with the numerator. And on the right-hand side here, I've got to do my 12 times by 3. So what I've done there is, in effect, I've multiplied by 12. Okay, I've multiplied by 3 on the first stage and multiplied by, sorry, 4 on the first stage and 3 on the second stage. If I now have a go at simplifying this a little bit, um, I'm going to multiply out the brackets. This one here, 3 lots of x and 3 lots of 3. And this bracket here is going to be 4 lots of x and 4 lots of minus 2. And now, whoops, move that down a little bit you can see that I've got a much simpler equation. I can simplify even further. The 3x and the 4x will go together. The numbers need to be stored separately. So we've got a plus 9 and a minus 8. Positive 9, minus 8, it's a positive 1. And now I should just be able to go ahead and solve this equation. If I move it up a little bit more, I'm going to take away 1 from both sides, which gives me 7x equals 35. And then I'm going to divide by 7 to give me a nice convenient answer of x equals 5. And that's your answer. Okay. You can go back and check that that's a correct answer. If we go back to the original question, here it is. If we imagine 5 in this position here, 5 plus 3 over 4, that's 8 divided by 4, which is 2. And if I imagine a 5 in the position there, 5 take away th 2 is 3. 3 divided by 3 is a 1. And that does make 3. So the answer x equals 5 
appears to work. Okay, so if you're ever in your exam or you're doing your homework and you're not sure how to check, you can go back, you can put your number back in the position where the X is and see if it works. Okay, um, the second method that I mentioned was the method of using a common denominator. Okay, this is uh, something a bit more familiar to some other students um, that I teach. They seem to prefer this method, so I thought I would show you. Okay, now if you're going to make a common denominator, normally if you had one quarter plus one third, you would make them into twelfths, and that's basically what we're going to do here. Okay, this one is three twelfths, this one is four twelfths, so it's seven twelfths. Well, here we're not so lucky, we haven't just got numbers. Okay, we've got algebra, we've got algebraic statements going on, so what we're going to do is we're going to just make sure that we can make both of those fractions out of 12. Okay, so here is the first one. Right, we are going to turn that into a fraction out of 12, and we're going to do that by multiplying the top and the bottom by 3. Okay, this second one we're going to make it into a fraction out of 12. And we're going to do that by multiplying the top and the bottom of our fraction by 4. And because I haven't actually changed the value of this fraction, remember if you multiply the top and the bottom of a fraction by the same amount, then it doesn't change the value, it just changes what it looks like. This one hasn't changed value, neither has this one changed value. So this number over here, this 3, didn't change because neither of those numbers had really changed. Now what I can do is I can multiply everything by 12. And what that's going to do is that's going to get rid of that 12 there and that 12 there because they're divided. And this time I am changing the value of each term. So I need to change the value of that final one. And now you can see this is very similar to the way that we did it in method 1. OK, it's got exactly the same uh, numbers going on, so you just multiply out the brackets, simplify it down, take away 1 from each side, and then divide by 7 to get your answer. And again, we get the answer x equals 5 for that question number 1. Now, I've got a second question here, question number 2. Okay, and the thing about this question is slightly more difficult uh, because we're doing a subtraction of the two fractions. So if I, again, go with the two different methods, the first method that I'm going to try, again, we've got 4 and 3, so it's going to make it a little bit similar. Um, we're going to start off by multiplying by 4. This is the first method, the multiplication method. So when I multiply by 4, this fraction, the 4 on the bottom of the fraction disappears. This fraction here, when I multiply by 4, is going to be 4, but it doesn't cancel out the 3. And then again, I've got to multiply that number by 4 as well. So that's my multiplying by 4. It had the effect of cancelling out the divide by 4 in the first fraction, and it has the effect of multiplying the numerator of the second fraction by 4, and the last number there, multiplied by 4. Now I'm going to multiply by 3. OK, and this one here, again, if I treat this like a bracket, I will get 3, lots of 3x plus 1 take away. Now the multiplying by 3 is going to cancel out the divide by 3 there. And 8 times 3 makes 24. Okay, we are getting towards the answer now. You should be able to see, I hope, um, that it's getting a little bit easier because we haven't got the fractions. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and simplify this. 9x plus 3 take away 8x plus 16 equals 24. Now this bit here is the place where lots of people will make an error 
Okay. If you put a minus there, you're going to make a mistake. Right? The reason this is a plus, there's two reasons you could think about this. You could think about it as being negative 4 multiplied by negative 4 to make a positive 16. Or you could think of it as taking away 4 lots of minus 4. And when you take away a negative, you end up adding. OK? That bit there is the place where you need to be careful. All right, You can have a possible error there. As it is, I've done it correctly. So we've got 9x plus 3 minus 8x plus 16 equals 24. And if I simplify this down, let 9x take away 8x is 1x. 3 plus 16 is 19, 24. Take away 19 from both sides. OK, and you should have x equals 5. Whoops, there we go. All right, so just be really careful about that. That is the only thing, the only reason I've done this second question is to highlight that error. You need to watch out for your double negative. Taking away a negative does make a positive. OK, and <coughs> if we have a go at that one again, that second question, um, but this time using the common denominator method, OK, it's not very much different, but it's worthwhile having a look at it again, just in case you prefer it. There is the second question. So the common denominator goes like this, doesn't it? OK, we're going to multiply the top and bottom of this one by 3, so that we make a common denominator of 12. We're going to multiply the top and bottom of this one by 4, So we've made a common denominator of 12, and I made a small mistake there. Let's get rid of that. That should be a 2. I got carried away with my 12s. Now we can multiply by 12, OK? And when we say multiply by 12, we mean multiply each term by 12. So we get the familiar site like that. And that's what we had when we were doing method 1. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to multiply these out. like that. OK? No, not OK. Why not? I've made a mistake. OK? This number here should not be a minus 16. It should be a plus 16. Remember, minus times a minus makes a plus. OK? So again, we're at 9x plus 3 minus 8x plus 16 equals 24. Simplify it down. Take away the 19s, and you've got x equals 5. OK, um, that's it, basically. You've got two methods there. You can multiply, or you can make a common denominator. Either way, you're going to end up with the same answers, and the really key thing to look out for is those double negatives.